It is Bible time, and we always start off with our pledge. So class, stand, and let's find out who my pledge helper is going to be. It's going to be Kayla. Kayla, come and be my pledge helper. Look at that big smile she already has on her face. She's ready to go. Can I see your smiles? And you're standing up straight and tall. Oh, look at table three. Boys and girls watching, you're ready. Hand over our heart. We're going to say our pledge right here. Good, and then we're gonna sing um, our other song where we put our hands right here by our side. So we're not gonna sing the Star Spangled Banner. We're gonna sing our other song when we're done. So hand over your heart and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Put your hands right here by your side and let's sing. Keep your eyes right here on this flag. Good job. My country is of the sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where job. You may be seated and thank you my pledge helper and boys and girls watching you are off to a great start. Let me ask you some questions. How many persons make up the one God? The what is it? Three. Are there three different gods? No. no. Just one God and three persons. This is called the Trinity. Very nice. Who made God? Nobody. Nobody. He has always lived and he always will. And oh, I am so thankful for that. And which person of the Trinity died for our sins? God the Son. God the Son. Yes, because it was God the Son that came from heaven to earth. And he was the one who was our Savior. So when I ask you, who, which person of the Trinity died for our sins? It is who? God the Son. Who is it, Jonathan? God the Son. Yes, God the Son. Nicely done. Thank you. Well, I think we should sing Always Say Thank You. So I need some helpers this morning. Let's see. Jonathan, come. Come do Always Say Thank You. All right. There you go. All right. And let me see. Yummy. It is yummy. All right. Stand right here with it. Good job. It is an apple on there. And Lauren, come. It's my favorite apple. It is. Apples are so good. Aren't you glad that God gave us those apples? And let's see. I'm going to pick Kyla, come. She's working hard. And Lucia, come. All right, class stand. And let's sing Always Say Thank You. Hey, you get to hold yours up first. Always say that song again okay let's sing it again all right remember if I tap your back that means you hold it up over your head okay you get to start yours first so you can hold yours up here we go always say thank you always say please when we're ungrateful God is not pleased answer politely do it with ease always say thank you always say please thank you very nice. That song is so fast. I like it though. We always say thank you and always say please. That is using our manners and being so polite. Let me see who could come and say some verses for me this morning. Let's do this one together though first. Let's say John 3, 16. Class stand. Boys and girls watching you say that with us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
John 3, 16. Great job, sit down. Oh, I love this verse. That means if we tell God we are sorry for those sins that we do, all those bad things that we do, he will forgive us. And then if we accept him as our savior, then we will have that eternal life. And one day we will be in heaven with him. And our name will get written in that very special book. My name's written in that book. Can it ever be erased once my name's in that book? No, it can never be erased. And I'm so thankful that God sent his son, Jesus, to be our savior. Oh, I wonder who could help me say this verse right here. Let's see. Angelina, come. <clears throat> Angelina, will you come say Psalms 118.1 for us? Say real loud. <coughs> that was very nice. Girls, stand. Girls watching, you stand with us. And will you help the girls say this verse? Begin. Psalms 118.1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Psalms 118.1. Thank you. That was very nice. Thank you, Angelina. You may be seated. Oh, how about this verse right here? Luke 11.28. Who could say that for me so nicely? Let's see. William, come. William, will you say Luke 11.28 real loud for us? Luke 11.28. Yes. Blessed. Very nice. I like how loud you said that too, so everybody could hear you. Boys and girls watching, you could hear them, couldn't you? Good job. Boys, stand. Boys, let's say Luke eleven twenty eight together. Boys watching, you help the boys in here. Sometimes they just really need your help. Here we go. Luke eleven twenty eight. Blessed are they. Wow, table two, and Cyrus, pat yourselves on the back. Whoa, that was amazing. You may be seated, boys watching. You pat yourself on the back because that was wonderful. You are hiding God's word in your heart. Let's see, you could say this verse for me. Myla, come. Myla, do you remember this one? Genesis 1 1. Could you tell the boys and girls watching? Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. She is learning God's word. Great job, class. Stand and let's say it together. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 1. Very nice. Stay standing. Don't sit down. Thank you, Myla. And let's sing Praise Him, Praise Him. Table 2, come and help me sing Praise Him, Praise Him. I like how this table, every time we stand to do verses or sing, you are helping me. Come stand over here, sweet girl. There you go. All right. Here we go. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is love. Him, love him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Love him, love him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Thank him, thank him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Thank him. Thank you, helpers. 
And boys and girls watching, you really are singing so nicely. Thank you. Great job. Well, let's see who my prayer helpers are going to be. Oh, they are going to be Kyla and Cyrus. Come. Kyla and Cyrus, come help me. Good. Who would you like to thank God for? My mommy. Go oh, talk real loud for me. My mommy. Oh, I still can't hear you. Boys and girls watching, can you hear that? My mommy. Mommy. And who else? Can you, can you thank God for our friends that are watching? Okay. But you're going to do it real loud for my sister. And who would you like to thank God for, Cyrus? For the ostriches. For the ostriches. Oh, those are those big birds. Can they fly? No, they're too big. But God still gave them wings, and so they could run fast. So, And who else would you like to thank God for? Um, for oh, I can't hear Carter. You. For Carter. Okay. I'm glad that Carter's feeling better. I'm glad that he is. All right. Prayer position. All eyes closed. You were talking to God? Good. All right. Kylie, talk real loud. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the mommies. Thank you for the mommy. Thank you for our friends watching. Thank you for our friends watching. Help them to have a great day. Help them to have a great day. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Good. 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 Dear Jesus, thank Good. you for the ostriches. Thank you for Carter in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for our day. Thank you for our school that we can learn about you. Thank you for our friends that can be watching and joining in on all our fun and learning. Thank you for the mommies and daddies that love us so much to make sure that we are getting to go to school and learn about you. I thank you for um, our teachers and thank you for um, all of our friends. I pray that you'll be with our president, help them to make good decisions. Be with the soldiers, Lord, that protect our country every day. Help them, keep them safe, keep them healthy. Thank you that they're so brave that they do that every single day for us. Thank you for the firefighters that they have a brave job too, Lord, as they are fighting to keep um, us safe and keep us protected from the fires, Lord, and just watch over them and their families, Lord, and we just thank you for that. Help us to have a great day. Help us to work hard and do our best, Lord. Help us to be attentive so that we can learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, let's sing one more song before our story, and I want it to be a happy song because I want to see those smiley faces all day. Let's sing happy all the time. I love that song. Let's sing that song. Are you ready? All right. I'm in right, out right, upright, down right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out right, upright, down right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart. I love that song. It makes me so happy. So let me see your happy smiles on your faces. Oh, good, because in this story today, we need to have that happy heart like somebody else in our story. So go ahead and close up those Bibles and put them right here. And you remember the stories that we've been learning about, about a lady who not only was beautiful on the outside, but she was beautiful on the inside. Who was that, Kayla? It was Queen who? Esther. Yes, it was Queen Esther. Remember, she got to be the queen because the old queen was choosing not to obey. He, she was not doing her job. She was not obeying the king. And so when you don't do your job, you don't get to keep your job. And so she didn't get to be the queen anymore. And now Queen Esther came before the king when he called for all the pretty ladies in the land to come. And they came and now she is the queen. Oh, how exciting. Well, remember that she had a cousin that she lived with. Remember his name? What was his name, Angelina? Mordecai. It was. It was Mordecai. Say that with me. Mordecai. It was. It was Mordecai. And remember how Mordecai sat at the gates and would listen and would wait and watch for Queen Esther because he wanted to make sure she was okay and would want to talk to her when he could. And remember he was listening one day to two soldiers talking. And what were they talking about, Catherine? Stan, tell me. They were making a plan. Was it a good plan? No, it wasn't. What kind of plan was it? Bethany, who, what kind of plan was it? Well, who are they going to hurt? Do you remember?
Carter, who were they planning on hurting? Yes, the king. They were planning on hurting the king. Boys and girls watching, you remembered that, didn't you? They were planning on killing the king. Oh, that was a wicked, wicked plan. But Mordecai heard about that. And so he told Queen Esther and Queen Esther told the king's servant and they took his name and they wrote it in the king's special book. And they wrote down, Mordecai saved the king. But that's all they did. They just wrote it down and they forgot about it. They shut the book and put it away. Well, remember, Queen Esther had a secret. What was that secret, that secret, William? Do you remember? She was a what? A Jew. Yes, good job. She was a Jew, and Mordecai told her not to tell, that it wasn't the right time to tell. And there was a reason for that, because God was going to use her for a very special job. Because there was a wicked man in the kingdom who worked for the king that didn't love God and thought he was more important than even the king sometimes. He thought he was so important because he was way up there high with the king that he thought everybody should bow down to him. What was his name, Luke? Do you remember? Stan, tell me, what was it? Remember, he was wicked. You could tell on his face. And when you can tell on somebody's face that they're grumpy and in his heart he was grumpy, what was his name? Jonathan, can you help your friend out? Um, Naaman. Not Naaman, but it sounds like Naaman. It starts with that letter we've been learning that says, <sighs> Who thinks they remember? Myla, do you remember? Haman. Haman. What was it, Luke? Haman. It was Haman. What was it, class? Haman. It was Haman. And Haman, oh, he was so mad because Mordecai wouldn't bow down to him. And he knew that Mordecai was a Jew, but he didn't realize that Mordecai and Queen Esther were related. Do you know that when you have an aunt or an uncle, that means you're related. You're related to them. Your family, you're related to them. Your brother and your sister, your mommy and your daddy, you're related to them. And he didn't realize that Queen Esther was a Jew as well. And he went to the king and he said, I think we should make a rule and we should be able to fight the, Jew, the Jews because they're not obeying. They're making up their own rules and they don't want to listen and they don't like you, king. Was he telling the truth? No, he was no, no. a lie. Mm -hmm. It was a big lie, and a lie is a what? Sin. A sin, isn't it? It is. It's a sin. But the king thought, oh, that's a good idea. Again, a king was being tricked into making a rule that was not good. Do you know that God's enemy likes it when you try to trick people? Mm -hmm, he does, especially if it's going to hurt people that love God. And oh, because God's enemy does not love God. God. He doesn't. Just like when he tried to trick Adam and Eve and he got them in trouble and they couldn't stay in the garden because he doesn't love God and he doesn't want people to love God at all. And so he thought that was a good plan too, that they were going to be able to hurt the Jews. How sad. Well, Mordecai started praying and everybody knew that Mordecai was praying. And the queen told Mordecai, you got to stop doing that out where everybody could see you. Everybody's going to know you are a Jew. But Mordecai said, maybe that's why you became the queen, so that you could help your people. So Queen Esther started to pray too, and she told the Jews to start praying too. And she got her servants to listen and think about that and pray, and they were praying. And everybody was praying. And then queen went before the king. But you couldn't just go before the king. You couldn't just walk right in and say, hey, king, how's it going? I want to talk to you. The king had to do something First, what did the king have to do first, Carter? Before you could go see him, he had to get he had to put out something. What was that? His special golden scepter. Remember? His special king scepter was gold and really pretty. And if he didn't put it out in front of you, you couldn't go see the king. And she was a little bit afraid, but she knew with God's help she could do it. Do you know that with God's help, you can do anything? If you're feeling grumpy and tired, but you know you have to do schoolwork, you know you have to come to school, that's your job right now, then you can ask God to help you. If you're having trouble keeping your hands in your lap, then God can help you with that. You can pray right in your chair and God will hear you. And then you don't have to worry about getting in trouble. If you think, oh, I'm going to do my own thing today. Oh, I would stop right now and think in my brain, Lord, please help me to obey. And that's what Queen Esther was doing. She was praying and talking to God and asking God 
to help her. And boys and girls watching, where you are, you can talk to God too. And Queen Esther was praying. And she went before the king, and he did. He put that scepter out, and she was able to come talk to her. But when she went in there, did she say, hey, king, you made this rule, and it's a bad rule, and you're going to kill my people. Is that what she did right away? No. no. She asked him to come to something really special. Lucia, what did she ask him to come to? A what? Oh, is anybody listening in our last lesson? What did she ask him to come to? Kylo. Oh, thank you. Come see Mrs. Stewart and give me a hug. This girl was listening. She's being very attentive. Good job. A banquet. And at she and he said, okay, we'll come to a banquet. I like banquets. Let's go to a banquet. And she said, and bring Haman too. Well, that night when he was trying to go to sleep, he couldn't sleep. He was awake all night. Hmm. That was another one of God's plans. He was awake all night and he told his servant to read out of that special book. And when they got to Mordecai's name, he said, well, what did we do for Mordecai? There was nothing written there. They hadn't done anything for Mordecai. So the next day he called Haman in and he said, Haman, what should I do for somebody that I like really a lot, who has done something really nice for me? What should I do for him? Haman thought it was for him, didn't he? He did. He thought it was just for him. And he thought, oh, king, you should put your robe on him. You should give him one of your rings. You should put one of your crowns on him. And I think you should put him on one of your horses. And somebody should walk that horse around with him on it and say, this is somebody the king is proud of. This is somebody the king really likes. Well, Haman really thought it was for him, didn't he? Oh, you like, you like when people say, oh, you did a good job. Oh, I'm so proud of you. You work so hard. Doesn't that make you feel all happy inside? I know Miss Stewart likes to hear that too. Well, it wasn't for Haman, was it? Who was it for? Do you remember? Mordecai. It was. It was for Mordecai. And how did that make Haman feel? Yeah. Oh, it sure did. It got him so angry because now he had to do it for Mordecai. He didn't even like Mordecai. And now he was going to have to do something for Mordecai. He was the reason he got the king to make that mean old rule to hurt the Jews. Well, that day he had to do it because he had to listen to the king. He didn't want to get in trouble with the king. And oh, I'm sure he did not do it with a happy face. I'm sure he didn't walk around all happy. I'm sure he was like, this is the king, somebody the king is proud of. I'm sure he did not do it with a happy heart because whenever you saw Haman, he didn't have a happy heart because he didn't love Jesus. Mm. Do you walk around like that? Do you walk around grumpy all the time? Do people have to say, where is your smile? All the time? I hope not. I hope you show the joy of Jesus on your face all the time. Uh, some of you, I love the way you smile at Mrs. Stewart all day long. Oh, do you know when you smile at people, it makes them so happy? It just makes them so cheerful inside. It does. Well, not Haman. He was grumpy. Well, that night they went to the banquet and they were sitting there and the king said, Oh, Queen Esther, what can I do for you? I will give you anything you want. I'll give you half my kingdom. What can I do for you? And she told him, I would like to save my people. Somebody is trying to hurt me and my people, and I want to save them. And you made a rule that said that they could fight my people and that they could kill my people, and they're trying to hurt me, and I want you to stop it. And the king said, who did this? Who did this? And she pointed to Haman, and she said, my people are the Jews. I am a Jew, and Haman is the one who got you to make that rule, and they're trying to hurt my people. Well, that day, Haman, they, the king said to take Haman out and to hang him. And that day, he got a big consequence for being so tricky and for getting the king to make that rule and being so ugly. He died that day. And the queen was able to save her people. God used Queen Esther to save her people. Wow. God was watching Queen Esther long before she became the queen. God allowed her to have that special job so that one day she could save her people. I don't know what kind of job you're going to have, boys and girls. Boys and girls watching, I don't know what God has for you, but I know it is going to be wonderful. But you know what? You have to do your part too. You have to obey with happy heart. You have to do your best because you never know what God will have for you. Oh, I don't know if you will grow up to be a king or a queen, boys and girls. But whatever your job is, 
We've talked about doctors and nurses. You could be that. Maybe you'll be a teacher. Maybe you'll just be a mommy, and that's wonderful, or a daddy. And you're, you'll be a policeman or a firefighter. But you can also be used by God to do wonderful things doing those jobs too. You never know what God has for you, but right now you have to show him. Right now. You don't have to be big like Queen Esther to do a job for God. We've talked about David. He was just a boy. We talked about Samuel. He came to the temple when he was just a boy. We talked about the servant girl. She was just a little girl. You don't have to be big like Mrs. Stewart or like mommies and daddies to be used by God. You can be used by God too. But God loves a cheerful worker. Are you going to be a cheerful worker? Are you going to have a smile in your heart just like Queen Esther did? I hope so too. I hope so. Class stamp. Let's end our Bible time today with singing about, oh, nope, we got to sit down for this song. We got to sing about Jonah. So remember when we stand in the Jonah part and we face this way first, let's sing about Jonah. Oh, Jonah was one who didn't obey God. Don't be like Jonah today. Let's be like Esther. Great job, sit down. Oh, boys and girls, don't be like Jonah. Don't be like him in that song, who he did not obey God immediately. Be like Esther and choose to obey with a happy heart. Obedience will always bring blessings. Be a cheerful worker today. <laughs>